On the 23rd of August 2006, the JCB Diesel Max broke the land speed record for the world's fastest diesel engine. It was the first car in the world to be entirely designed by computer. The project was a collaboration between Staffordshire-based JCB, Visioneering in Coventry and engineering consultants Ricardo. JCB are tackling a project like this because we started to manufacture our own diesel engines at the end of 2004 and that was a big step for the company, it's a new startup business for us and this is a really great way to, uh, to demonstrate what its potential is. And I had absolutely no idea, and I don't think anybody else had, that we would eventually get out of this 80 to 100 horsepower engine, that we'd get 750 horsepower out of it. It's been a very intense development programme from January through to July. The two engines that are in the car today were, were passed off on the Ricardo test beds just literally about 48 hours before we, we came out here. These days the technical uh, input that goes into building uh, the fast track, for example, which is complex control systems in, in, inside it, and this is a great way of JCB demonstrating that outside of their normal environment. Although the record stands at 235 miles an hour, which is relatively slow, the fundamental problem is that we need two engines linked, mechanical connection between the front engine and the back engine, and that way basically we can save a lot of weight and we can make the car a lot safer, etc. You see the pictures, you can read about it, but uh, actually being there, the heat and the light is unbelievable. And uh, really the, the atmosphere, the scenery um, is awesome. And I think uh, all of the team have found that same experience and it's, it's really a special place to be. We've got an engineer and fitters or engineers and mechanics to cover each part of the car because you cannot send out for someone once you're here, you need to have everything at your fingertips. In conjunction with uh, a, a JCB designer called Mike Turner, um, we've produced a shape which everybody here in Utah are saying is an absolutely beautiful car. And that in itself is a sort of great satisfaction. One of the remarkable things about Bonneville, we've actually got between 11 and 12 miles of perfectly smooth, very hard um, and reasonably high grip salt. There's, a, there's the real challenge there of keeping the car in a straight line and keeping it on boost. We've done a, a routine engine change. Uh, the engines have a, a limited life and uh, the engines that have got in now are what we're calling our, our record engines. It started cleanly, accelerated very cleanly all the way up through the gears, fifth gear at uh, around about 3,500 RPM through the, into the measured mile. Um, I actually forgot at that stage we were doing a record, having hit the, uh, the, the speed we were looking for, eased off and then dropped the exhaust brake and then suddenly thought, I'm supposed to hold it to the end of the mile. Having, <laughs> having got to the end of the mile, we lost a couple of miles an hour. We're looking for around about 350 miles an hour, and having got a, a, a 328 yesterday, which was just a smidge under what we were aiming for, we're looking for around 330. That's the highest uh, flying mile we've had so far. We're now looking to push that up to the highest peak speed and sustain it both ways through the mile. We won't actually be using full power, astonishingly. We'll be using 12, 1300 horsepower today of the 1500 available, and that will hopefully give us a comfortable 350 with me throttling back to control the speed. So it's gonna be an interesting run. The team achieved a nearly 50% increase in speed on the previous world record and hit an amazing 350 miles per hour. I feel absolutely amazing for the team. I mean, this, this team is a fantastic group of people and uh, we've worked together for 18 months and in particular in the last six weeks or so with incredible intensity and they deserve this. Brilliant, wonderful. I mean, they've, they've, they've done an amazing job uh, working in an adver adversity quite frequently. It's a huge statement of just how good the JCB engines really are. But more importantly, British engineering and diesel power have both achieved something quite, quite amazing today.